We Are Building Lives is the name of the charity. And it's basically tended to raise awareness and raise some funding for homeless veterans here in the Nashville area. Well, I, for the last, this is the seventh annual. So for the last six years, I've always been one of the musical acts. And this year, they're like, I was like, you know, we, need, we really need to get like a really good host. It'd be good if we could have a host, which I think started, was the equivalent of me raising my hand. Like, oh, well, that would be nice of you to do it. So here I am hosting it tonight. And we're going to bring, we have some acts and we have a couple of veterans that have been through the program. And we'll get to talk to them. Mainly it's really just to get these people out here in the audience that have all come and bought the sponsorships to get them a little bit more aware of the challenges that we're facing. You know, Nashville, out of, did you know that there's actual numbers? They, have, they know who's homeless in this town. We have 2,016 homeless people, and of those, 595 are veterans. And there, there is a solution to that, and we just we need to educate these folks, and they're all part of the solution. I am. I'm going to have to read this because I'm very nervous. Um, I'm a proud United States Army veteran. Woo! Woo! A few years ago, I could not have imagined standing up here today. I could have been sitting where you are now. I have a great job, benefits, 401k, savings, good health, a nice home. And then slowly, piece by piece, my life started to fall apart. Um, starting with my physical health and uh, snowball down after that, I was diagnosed with MS. And um, you don't realize how quickly you can lose everything if you lose your health. Um, and you realize just how much of life is actually beyond your control. And I don't have time to go through the list of all of the events that led me to where I was um, because it was, it's a very long list and quite unbelievable. Um, but I want to take the time to talk to you about uh, We Are Building Lives and how they've helped me. One of the not so obvious things which a lot of folks don't even think of is if you've ever had the unpleasant experience of having to go on food stamps and um, having the grocery clerk look at you like you disgust them. This is a small part of the invisible shame that comes with being at the bottom. I have to say not once since I started working with We Are Building Lives have I ever felt judged. Or even more importantly, I have never felt pitied. It's very hard to look up from the bottom, whether you had a part in it or no control at all. The events that led to the place you are, there comes an inevitable shame and a sense of utter failure. And sometimes you need help to even start looking up, to even start believing for better things. I was first referred to We Are Building Lives when I needed help getting tra transportation so I could work. And I was told about a program that helped veterans get vehicles, which was We Are Building Lives. And once I made that connection, they asked me what else I needed. And when I needed help with my electric bill, they got it done. And one of the best things they did was connect me with a mentor, a fellow veteran, who's there for me, checks on me, makes sure I don't need anything. Because of the relationships with these people, I've had firewood delivered to my house. I've had a hot water heater installed. I've had Kroger gifts card given to me for food. And one day they emailed and asked me if I needed any work done on my house. And I said, oh boy, <laughs> how about looking at my doors because I'd like to close them and not see daylight um, when they're closed shut. And they came and they looked at my house and they helped me go through and make a list of other things that needed to be done. And when you're that far down, you don't think you need anything. You, you just, you're so overwhelmed, you can't see your circumstances. There were so many things that needed to be done, but you don't want to ask. You don't want to say, well, gee, my sink is leaking and, and this doesn't work. And so they've gone through all that. They've made a list. They're diligently working to help me make those improvements to my home. They, not only did they do that, but they sat down and talked with me about my financial situation. We talked about options. They listened to my ideas. They asked me the tough questions. They guided me with advice. And they're like protective big brothers to me, honestly. And they don't pick on me, yet. <laughs> so they've helped me to start looking up, to start believing for better things. And I've been blessed to have other organizations help me, but I found there are differences between those organizations and this organization. We Are Building Lives did something that no other group has ever done. They stayed. 
They didn't just fix one problem. They helped me with one problem, and then they helped me with the rest of the problem. Thank you. I think, you know, there's two big challenges that you face when you're trying to, when you're trying to get people off the streets to get them into houses. One of, one of them is, okay, where do, the, where do the resources come from? That's an easy fix. We've got that happening right near, here. But there's other things that have to happen, as you heard from Robin. You've got to wrap them up in services. You've got to help them. Then you've got to identify what, what, was the, what was the reason that they are homeless to begin with. And, and I, the sad thing about it is so many veterans, and I've talked to so many of them, we, there's different issues that come with it. Some of them... There's the, you know, there's the negativity that we all hear from PTSD, there's drug and there's alcohol. So you identify those, and then you have to pour everything you got into that issue so that they don't go right back to where they were. Because it takes, it takes strong mentors, like Robin said, it takes strong help, and it takes people like Robin who are strong enough to step up and say, hey, I need some help. And what a shame if the help's not there and the hand's not there. That's just what we're called to do. Well, and you know, we are one of those folks. We now are educated about what's going on and the cause and this what, what this event conquers and what the charity conquers, and that's great. Music has a different way of reaching people. That's why I think I love that they in, incorporate it into a charity event because they could do, you know, these really moving movies and PowerPoint presentations and, and do these things, but you know, music just has a way of motivating people and reaching down where words don't. So I'm happy that that's a gift I've been given. I've been in this town a long time writing songs and doing stuff. So anytime you get to use your, anytime you get to use your superpowers for good, it's a, it's a blessing. I, I, I did seven years with the 75th Ranger Regiment, combat veteran, and I, I kind of, I think when you make it out of any kind of combat situation, then you will spend the rest of your life thanking the guys that were on your left and your right. Because honestly, by the grace of God, that's the only reason I'm around. So you're going to do everything you can to try and give back. And especially when it's something that's as simple as, hey, would you come play some music? And would you come up and introduce some people? I, I, I got no problem being on a stage. So yes, I will be there and I will help. That's my gift. You know, look at that. I, you know, even more, it's the cause. At the end of the day, everybody wants to make a difference. Everybody wants to know that they mattered. And it's, there's hundreds of charity events. There's hundreds of charities out there. And there's a lot doing things for veterans. Pick one. Be part of something. Because at the, when you're part of something and you're bigger than just, it's bigger than just you, you'll start, you'll, you'll feel it. And you know that you've been part of the solution. And there's, no one has ever gone to the grave feeling bad saying, you know, I did too much. I did too much for people. Doesn't work that way. Well, thank you for a great interview, and thank you tonight for all that you're doing and all that all the entertainment is bringing to the table and all the volunteers that make this happen. My pleasure, man. This is a, it's a, good, it's a good night. Good night to be us. Hey, this is Paul Taylor hanging out tonight with Kenny Thomas right here for... For? Why are we here? Oh, well, we, we are building lives. That's why we're here. We are building lives right here tonight. We've got the whole Music Central gang out here tonight, and we're going to have a great concert for you coming up here shortly. All right. One of the big lessons that we always learned in the military was the value of the person on our left and our right. In fact, when it comes down to it, it's really not about all the, the other outside causes. It's not about the flag. It's not about Nazi Germany. It's not about Japan. It's not about ISIS. It's not about... Al-Qaeda, it's what got us to raise our hand, but when it comes down to it, it's about each other. Because we know, the only way I will make it out of there by the grace of God is if it's up to those people on our left and our right. Because if you don't do your part to hold the line, the guy next to you and the person next to you, they gotta pick up the slack. And when I could spend an hour talking to you about and telling you stories of all these veterans that raised their hand and tell you stories about folks that have stepped up, we can sum it up in a three and a half minute song. It's about three people we know by name that all did something they didn't want to do it, but they did it because there were people counting on them. Blood on their knuckles, mud on their face, they fought back to the huddle for one last place. Come back and says, you gotta buy me sometime. Yeah, I can get us there, boys. Yeah. Shoulder to shoulder and side by side. Give it your best. I'm giving mine. We're gonna win this together if we hold the line. Got his elbows on the 
table and his head in his hands. Twenty years on a job he never thought would ever end. But his wife says we'll make it. We're gonna be just fine. We'll get through this together. Yeah, we're gonna hold the line. Franklin just recently we hung out together oh yeah most definitely man that, that was awesome man and I went there and had fun and you know anytime we can do, do part of that man or be part of it because this is the greatest country in the world man and, you know and uh, uh, we can say and be and dream as big as we want to in this great country and we do not give it up enough for all of our great American heroes and everything well we appreciate that
Jim. Tractor. You can't miss it. It's sitting right there in my yard. The county came and took that water tower. That's Jenny with a baby in the car. Flower of Sunday service at the Church of Christ. If we want to see, we better leave right. Show y'all around my town, baby. Is that the way?